Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Crips. Today I have on Dr. Anna, all the way from Santa Monica, California. So Dr. Anna, you're a holistic doctor, correct? Yes, I'm. So the term is kind of evolving in medicine. Um, it's right now. It's it's being called integrative medicine, which means we're integrating, you know, concepts from Western and Eastern philosophy, and it's it's not just a conventional Western model anymore. So, it's holistic is kind of an outdated term. Okay, that's yeah. good because I, I I'm learning as we go, so I'm glad yeah. that. You... Well, I mean, it right now just just the way that where medicine is heading because, you know, they're starting to appreciate the Eastern concepts. I think people in the past typically thought holistic applied to, you know, acupuncturists and other type of Eastern practitioners. So they wanted to, I think, separate uh, the field to kind of show people that it's, it's a blend of both worlds. Right. That makes a whole lot of sense. Um, so did you have to, what's, what's typically the difference between a um, regular medical doctor and an integrative doctor? Like, did, was, um, is the schooling any different? No. So basically, I went to a four-year medical school. I went to the University of Florida, go Gators. <laughs> and um, I actually did a residency in family medicine at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. So I'm board certified in family medicine. So I, you know, I was actually trained in the Western conventional setting. Okay. Um, but through other avenues and courses, I've, you know, and, and even just through my own healing process, I've learned you know, to apply different things that are more alternative into practice. So I use, you know, concepts that I know as a, as a physician, but I also, you know, t so here's an example. In, in Western medicine, we're taught, well, here's a symptom, and you treat the symptom. But, you know, after treating thousands of patients, I was seeing that people aren't just symptoms, they're people, right. and their symptoms have lots of underlying deep root causes so you know that's kind of where the integrative approach starts to come in you start addressing the mind and the spirit and you start addressing those deep root causes now I actually um, this is just showing everyone how how people are starting to appreciate integrative medicine it's become an official board specialty so oh, wow. For example, people, you know, you people specialize in cardiology, and people specialize in family medicine, they specialize in rheumatology. And now uh, it's become an official board specialty. So in 2 years I'll be board certified. Uh, so I'm really excited wow. about that. That's a huge step. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so what um what made you decide to go along that path as opposed to um a medical medical um doctor, a typical medical doctor, like was your family involved in, in that type of lifestyle or? Uh, no, not really. So when I was in my second year of residency, I, I burnt out and, uh, just for several different reasons, personal, uh, you know, professional and a residency is pretty, you know, tough. You're, right. you know, doing like 24, 30 hours in a row. And, um, I had, so I would see patients in my clinic and I started noticing that nobody was getting better. And I, and, and the, the concepts I was teaching them and recommending for them have been scientifically proven. So I didn't understand why they weren't getting better. And I mean, it's known that you know, we have a huge chronic disease epidemic. Right. The, uh, so greater than 50% of healthcare costs are due to chronic diseases, which are preventable, Right. you know, with just a healthy lifestyle. So, but they don't teach you this concept really. I mean, they do teach you, but the way the system's set up is you have to see more patients in order to make ends meet. 
So what ends up happening is you see 25 patients a day. You get to spend like maybe 10 or 15 minutes with each of them. You don't really have time to really get to the deep, the deep causes of what's going on with them. Right. So what happened is I actually started meditating. I got really, really stressed out, really burnt out. And I was just like, I'm going to give this meditation thing a try. <laughs> And it really just completely changed my life. And I ask people, you know, who, who get into meditation, like, how, how has it benefited you? And everybody just has these, like, amazing stories. And it just kind of confirms, you know, how, how my life completely changed. So it's almost like I started meditating and I had this intention to be healthier and to help myself and help others. And once I started to help myself, and kind of work on myself, I was able to better help other people. So I got to the root cause of what was causing all of my stress and things like that. So I started to see people for who they were and not just their illness. Right. And um, I mean, I, I had a, you know, I developed a personal relationship with patients in the past. I, I you know, I wanted to be a doctor since I was nine. Wow. But I, you know, it got deeper. So I'd see people and, you know, I'll give you an example. Somebody who comes in with diabetes, you know, we're trained. Well, I mean, you can teach people. You, you want to tell people to change their lifestyle. Unfortunately, it's a lot easier said than done. So, you know, you give them a pill to bring their blood sugar down or you, bring, you give them insulin to bring their blood sugar down. But if they're not changing their diet... Then and they're not, you know, working out, trying to lose weight, then their blood sugar is always going to be up, and all we're exactly. doing is putting these little band aids to bring it down. Right now, you know, if you do a little bit more soul searching with this person, for just for example, you find out that their diabetes is caused by obesity. Well, why are they obese? Exactly, well, because they stress eat. Well, why do they stress eat? And you open this huge, deep you know, just um, world into them that a pill can't really address. And, you know, you start you start learning more about their family history and what happened to them when they were younger and, you know, they don't know really how to manage their stress. And, you know, these are the things that we as physicians need to be educating our patients on and helping them with. Unfortunately, in the conventional setting, we can't. So, you know, at that t at the time, so this was about three years ago when I really started to get into it. I I just started noticing a shift in my patients. Mm. They were, they were. You could just tell light bulbs were going off, and they had these insights about their lives. And you know, maybe they didn't get a hundred percent better physically, but a lot of it's mental. Right. You know, a lot of it is mental. So. You, you could just see that they were getting better, like their blood pressure was getting better, their, you know, their sleeping patterns were getting better. And then I thought to myself, okay, there's something there's here that, that is really important that people need to know about. And because people come to me to help them, you know, they look up to me to help them. Right. But what people don't realize is I, I can only help. I can't fix the power to heal is within all of us, you know. So if That's you powerful. go to some, it, yeah. So if you go to someone and you expect someone else to fix you for issues that most of the time are issues that you have brought upon yourself, then you're never going to find complete healing. So, you know, people are coming to doctors and doctors aren't able to get. To the root cause because of the way we're taught because of the way the insurance companies dictate our care and we just keep people sick and right. it's it's no wonder why people I mean we have all these health care costs that are so high um, so yeah I hope that answers your question I can go on sure. this is like my soapbox <laughs> so I can go on and on about like all of this stuff <laughs> well I'm definitely interested because um, I have I'm, I'm, my experience has only been with, you know, the traditional medical doctors. And um, I know for sure that it's um, kind of putting a Band-Aid over issues that, you know, that people have. And they don't really um, help heal the actual underlying issues. So I think that that's awesome. So with the integrative medicine, um, do you recommend yoga and, like, meditation and mindfulness? Oh, definitely. Because... 
you know, so here's why mindfulness is so powerful. But I just from what I've seen, people are really stressed out, and a lot of what's causing these medical problems are related to stress. So people don't manage their stress well. Stress has, you know, an effect on the body. It can cause heart disease. It can cause lowered immunity. It can cause so many issues on its own. But then you have people who are mediating their stress with things that are affecting their body even more. So they're smoking, they're drinking, they're overworking, they're trying to avoid. But a lot of the times people don't realize that they're doing this. It's like they're they're just caught up in the emotions of life. Right. So unless you become aware of what you're doing, you can't really change it. Right. And so that's one, that's one reason why mindfulness is so powerful. The other reason is a lot of the reason we're so stressed out is because our minds are in the past or in the future. Exactly. Not in the They're present. not in the present moment. So mindfulness helps you stay in the present moment. I mean, it's very hard because we've been so conditioned to think not about now, but about every other moment except now. So when you practice mindfulness, not only are you keeping your mind centered in the most important part of life that's happening right now, but you're also paying attention to how, you know, your habits. So for example, for me, and this is something that I learned, my weight would always fluctuate. And I used to stress eat. I had no idea that I used to stress eat. It would just happen. Right. But when you practice mindfulness, instead of grabbing like a piece of chocolate when I get stressed out, I f I'm thinking about, okay, I am stressed out right now. I am about to eat a piece of chocolate. I'm going to make a decision to not eat that piece of chocolate. Right. So these are these are really powerful concepts that people can can utilize every day to help them. So, you know, meditation is really all about being present. Yoga is all about being present. So a lot of people think, well, you have to you know, sit in lotus posture and chant Om to meditate. And, and that's a really awesome way to meditate, mm -hmm. but that's not the only way to meditate. It's really just about being present. So, yeah. you know, going out for a walk in nature and just paying attention to the sights and sounds around you and really, really taking it all in, your mind is in the present. So you're right. not thinking about what's going on in the past or worried about you know what what could potentially happen so that in itself really helps calm you down and keep you healthy yeah so and I mean yoga yoga too a lot of people don't realize that yoga is not just doing headstands and really cool poses I mean Uh-oh. I believe your computer froze up. Doc. Hello? Yes. I don't know what happened. Okay. Me either, but okay. <laughs> okay. So did you get that part? Yes. Yeah. So yoga, um, you know, it's about, like I was saying, it's about connection. Right. So, right now, you and I are practicing yoga. I agree. You know, we're not doing headstands or anything like that, but we're, we're present with each other. We're communicating with each other. I'm not thinking about things that are stressing me out because right. I'm staying present. So, you know, yoga is also about unifying the mind-body connection as well. And that's why yoga is when you do traditional yoga like hatha yoga and you do the poses you're you are connecting your mind and your body right. and that's that's what mindfulness is about if you're not aware of what's going on you can't you can't make the changes to get better exactly um just to clarify when i read um about mindfulness when i first started hearing about it I um basically to simplify it, it was uh being aware of your moment to moment actions. So basically yes. completely being in the moment. And I've realized that um a lot of times I have two dogs and a cat and when I'm with you know, on the porch with my dogs, um 
basically in that moment and I'm not really thinking about anything else. And that's what um, animals help a lot with. That's why uh, therapy dogs are good and, you know, cats are good to re- reduce your stress level and things like that. So yeah, I, definitely. I see the correlation now because I thought it was just um, like you said that you have to be in lotus posture and do the, you know, chant. But really it's about being aware of what's going on right there in that moment. And um, not so much focus on what ha- already happened or what's coming ahead of time. So I would- yeah, it's 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 really hard. It's hard. I've you know I've learned I've been learning and teaching these concepts for about three years now, and I constantly have to bring myself back to the present. I constantly get caught up because I mean you have to think about it. We're conditioned, and we spend so much of our time in the in the past or the future. So, and everybody's like this, or not everyone, but a lot of people are like this. So it's, it's just something that comes with practice. I mean, the more you do it, the easier it gets. I mean, you know, I definitely can see how now it's a lot easier for me to catch myself as opposed to like, you know, two years ago. Right. So, um, you're an author, correct? Yes. You write about this in your, in your book? Yeah. So... The title of the book is Meditate, Don't Medicate, A 14-Day Journey of Letting Go and Finding Yourself. Awesome title, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. you. So basically, it's an intro to mindfulness. It's, It's a workbook. So I've divided it into 14 days, and I ask the reader questions that the reader has to answer. And they're just, you know... Questions that maybe a lot of us don't think about, like, what are our goals in life? I mean, a lot of people don't think that. Or, you know, I I have, you know, areas to write about, you know, to record what, you know, what we've eaten for the day and what we're grateful for, just to kind of take an hour a day to practice these concepts and, and just learn a little bit more about ourselves. So I just ask, and I teach, you know, I teach different meditation concepts. So like, you know, I, I talk about, you know, deep breathing. I talk about, um, you know, letting go of emotions. I talk about forgiveness, gratitude, uh, positive affirmations. I think that's really powerful. A lot of people don't realize the things, the thoughts they have about themselves, the things that they say about themselves. So... You know, a lot of times what we think and say to ourselves without realizing is very negative. Yeah. Like, I can't, or I'm so stupid. And and so it's it's about just practicing saying, like, I'm awesome, and today's a great day. And it sounds kind of phony, but it's not. It's just not what we're used to hearing. Exactly. So it's like, it's like a it's simple intro mind. to mindfulness. Yeah. Now, one thing I do want to say is I'm not against medication. I think that there is a place for medication. It's just that the way the system has the way the system is now is that that's all that we're doing is right. medicating instead of re, you know working on the underlying causes. But what I found is you know in my own life and in in treating my patients as if you're working on dealing with the underlying causes and you're practicing a healthy lifestyle and you're doing everything you can from an alternative approach, you may still need something to help you. Right. You know, so, but at that, at the same token, you may not need as much medication, so you won't be experiencing a lot of the side effects. So it's really, it's all about balance. Right. You know, it's really about getting people to, deal with the underlying causes of their issues. Yeah, that's an um, amazing concept. I was speaking with um, a, a friend of mine who I um, had a conversation with via Skype for my website, and he actually, um, he has sickle cell anemia, and mm-hmm. he um, changed, uh, he transitioned to vegan and the vegan lifestyle, and um, he said that he went from three three times a week going to the doctor for, you know, pain and then to every three months. So um, he still, you know, has to go occasionally and he still may have to take the medication, but the eating properly and, you know, just changing his lifestyle helped him out dramatically. So I think that correlates with what you were just saying. Oh, 
definitely. I mean, it's, and here's the thing, it's, it's about the basics. I think people, that's the other thing too, is a lot of people, you know, like I practice Ayurveda, which is an ancient Indian healing modality, mm. um, or I incorporate it into my practice. And, you know, I have a lot of people that are like, well, I just want to take the herbs and I don't, and the thing is, they go from the pharmaceuticals to the herbs, but they're still not dealing with the underlying causes. And it's really just about, and the great thing about Ayurveda is that you're, it's really focused on diet mm. and lifestyle. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really emphasized that unless you're working with the diet, these herbs aren't going to work. Right. So, you know, it's, you know, really, really, really powerful. I can't tell you how therapeutic eating healthy is and then you know but the basics include exercise so we you know we have a culture of people who are starting to realize the benefits of fitness and of eating healthy but I have worked with a lot of people and known a lot of people including myself you know if you're not dealing with the stress if you're not relieving your stress you know, it doesn't matter how much yoga or exercise you do or what type of food that you eat. You have it's it's a balance. You, know, you have to take care of your mind as well. Right. So you're taking care of your body with the fitness, and you know, to some extent, you are taking care of your mind with the uh, with the food and the exercise. Mm. But you know, really staying present, being mindful, focusing on your breath learning how to breathe properly these are these are things that, that it's like you can't have like an a plus you know getting leaving a doctor's office without having all of these concepts fit together right i agree and that um that's all about basically the mind body and spirit um connecting together and you know finding a balance i think that's the best way to live a well-balanced life when all three of those things are al aligned so, Definitely. Yeah. So you um, learned a lot of that on your own, or do you have like mentors and things that you um, learn from? Well, combination. Um, so I went to India a few years ago, and I want to go there so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's a really wonderful place. I. Um, if you ever go, let me know. I can tell you like the good places to go, and I definitely will go back. But I had just finished my residency, and I just needed, you know, I had spent the last 10 years of my life just studying and training, and um, I went there, and I did a meditation retreat, mm -hmm. and it was in the northern part of uh, India and in the Himalayas, and I ended mm -hmm. up just staying there my whole trip, which was like 21 days. Oh, wow. And uh, my... The meditation leader of this retreat was a Reiki master. Mm. So she, um, I mean, I actually learned, I became certified in Reiki working with her, but I learned a lot about myself and a lot of, you know, how, how to meditate with her. And then a lot of, you know, I've, I've taken courses that are geared towards health professionals, you know, like my Ayurveda, my Ayurveda training is taught by physician medical doctors who have been trained by you know Ayurvedic practitioners from mm. India. So and, and I try really when I practice you know integrative medicine to to keep it to I try my best to keep it science based. Right. Because you know there is a lot of stuff out there that's not true. Um, there is also a lot of stuff out there that's helpful but just hasn't been proven yet but I, I try to blend concepts you know first of all work on the basis but do things that won't harm someone first and I think that's because a lot of people have you know a resistance to this type of medicine because they For sure you know because you've seen some things that like you know some people who maybe aren't ready to maybe they you know they're not of the at a place where they can go without medication and they suffer as a result right you know so it's really just about balancing so um just to clarify could you elaborate on reiki i know um you know the basics of it but for people who may not know who may be watching the interview sure so basically 
Reiki and a lot of Eastern philosophy, even Ayurveda, there's this concept that we have this unified field of energy that that's within us and that connects us to everything around us. And, you know, a lot of these Eastern concepts like acupuncture, Ayurveda, Reiki, what they do is try to basically strengthen and align this unified energy field. So that it's, you know, known as chi or ki and reiki. Mm -hmm. So reiki is a light touch therapy and the whole premise is that the practitioner is able to basically channel unify the the universal unified energy to through the person. So it's not the energy of the person through you, it's just the energy of the unified field. And that's what uh, that's what um, acupuncture does as well. I mean, basically, the needles hit points to try to balance the the energy lines, and that's what Ayurveda does as well. So it's basically a light touch therapy with hands. Right. That's um actually the most clear I've ever heard it described. <laughs> and, okay, great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I've read about it, and um, I've had people explain it to me before, but that was probably the most, um, it gave me the, the the most idea of what it actually is. So I'm definitely really and, and are you familiar with chakras? Um, I've heard of them. I've read a lot about them. Um, yeah. So basically, this is also a very Eastern concept. Uh, we have these energy fields. We have seven. Well, actually, we have many chakras, but the seven main ones that you hear about and maybe see in pictures mm -hmm. Basically, ch the word chakra means wheel, and there are wheels of energy. And this is this isn't something that we can see. It's just a concept that a lot of Eastern philosophies talk about. And each, you know, chakra center basically corresponds to, you know, different physical, emotional, and mental components of an ex of a, a person's existence. Okay. Even you know, an animal's existence. So. A lot of the times what happens if you think of these wheels of energy, if, if the wheel's not functioning right, you know, then it's not moving well. And what, you know, what Reiki and these other healing modalities do is they, even with yoga, yoga does this a lot. You help basically speed the wheels up to kind of turn all the bad stuff and get out of there. And this is, it's a very foreign concept to many Westerners. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's it, it's a cool way to think about things, and I think there is a little bit more science coming out trying to prove, you know, what these chakras correspond to in the body. I'm very interested in trying to find that out to kind of help people understand these concepts, but mm -hmm. that's another way, you know, Reiki works is it helps kind of, you know, balance and align the chakras as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. The the very first time I heard about that, um, I actually was living in uh, the Valley in California, uh, uh -huh. just outside of L.A. And um, a friend of mine was speaking to me about it. And it was such a foreign language to me that I had no idea what she was talking about. And <laughs> coming, you know, I'm coming from the East Coast and um, I grew up religious. So to me, it was like, I don't know if this is like um, of like of God. I don't know what this is. Like it was. <laughs> It was such a foreign concept to me. It is. And but um as I, you know, grew a little more and I read more and I started to speak with people more, I'm like, I understand it now. Like it make it makes sense to me as opposed to before. So I, so I can give you an example. So hypothyroidism is is something that we commonly see in women. Mm hmm and in Eastern philosophy, they think that, you know, because the thyroid is located in the area of the throat chakra, that it's a throat chakra issue. And if you think about it, women, especially, well, in all, a lot of societies, we're very suppressed. So the throat chakra helps us express what's coming from here. So mm. there's connection from the heart to the mind. Mm. So when you have this chronic blockage and, it's it's interesting, you know, kind of as a Western doctor to think about this. Well, oh, it's a it's a throat chakra issue. So, but you know, 
when I see a patient, I don't tell them, oh, your throat chakra is blocked. You know, I, I apply all the concepts. I'm like, okay, I'm going to check your labs. I'm going to do the proper physical exam. I'm going to find out what's, what's wrong, what I've been trained, you know. But, and then, you know, that person may need some thyroid medication. I mean, most of the time they do, but, but you're helping somebody because if you talk to them and you say, you know, a lot of women, you know, you, you, you can talk to somebody and find out that when they were younger, they weren't allowed to express themselves or if they've been in an abusive relationship and you help them express themselves. Um, it may not take their thyroid issue away. It may, it may help with it. They may not need as much medication, but you're not hurting them. I mean, yeah, you're, getting, you know, you're trying to help them communicate and that's very healing and therapeutic for them. So it's interesting to kind of correlate the different concepts. And, you know, I, I think there is research that needs to be done. Well, you know, could Reiki or acupuncture or, you know, Ayurveda, when you work on this particular chakra, like, does it correlate to actual physical benefits that we can measure? I think that's still to be, you know, we still need to work on that. Right. But um, just these, these concepts I've applied to myself and I've seen and I've applied with other people, I may not directly come out and say say it but I approach it from different angles and I find that it, it is very healing for people I agree um, do you think that that um, financial you, you doctors who start to apply to, um, apply these techniques and let's say they start to work and do you think that they'll have financial backing to basically determine if they're actually scientifically proven to work or do you think that it, they wouldn't do that um, you know, unfortunately, the way the system works is if it's, if it's making money, people will put money into it. Um, so, and it's just a whole cultural shift. I mean, you so many people are just so used to the pharmaceuticals and the Western concepts, but, um, I, I do think that it really just depends on where you're at too. You know, out here in California, you have like UCLA, the East West you know, medical, they have, a, they have a whole, you know, wing, a center, it's called the East West Medical Center. Oh, wow. So they, they have a lot of backing. Um, it's really about, you know, like knowing the right people, I think, too. Um, I, I heard, you know, there was a, I think a neurologist somewhere, in, I don't know exactly where, but she you know, was treating somebody using Ayurveda and it made such a difference in that person's life and that person had, you know, a lot of connections and was able to help support this person. They're doing some studies on it. So I think that's kind of how it works. Okay. You know, it is it is hard because you have you have to take so many things into consideration, like is it gonna harm the person, you know, um you know, are we doing, is it ethical to, you know, give somebody something when they could be taking something else that's more effective? So there, it's, it's a, it's very complex. Okay. I definitely understand. It's, um, a lot to be learned about that <laughs> for sure. Um, I just feel like what you're doing is in my personal opinion is amazing. That's why I wanted to speak with you Thank and had this conversation because Thank you. I do think that this is the direction that um, doctors should be, you know, headed in because uh, it addresses, like you said, a lot what's going on underneath of the Band-Aid. You know what I mean? So I think that's amazing. So, um, Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm honored that you took the time to speak with me and um, oh, educate me. <laughs> and, you know, that's the thing is the word doctor in Latin means educator. Oh, wow. I didn't so know that. it's not. It's not God. It's not you know you know the person that fixes everything. It's educator. But how can we educate people when a we're not educated with all these concepts? B we're not educated to take care of ourselves. You know, as physicians. Right. And C you don't have time to talk to someone. You know, right. so I, that's why I'm so passionate about this because it's like, well, if I don't 
always have time to do it in an office setting, I'm going to blog about it. I'm going to have conversations with you about it. Like, everybody has the power to heal, and it takes really simple concepts. And if you can have that those basics down, you may not, you know, completely change your life around, but I guarantee you that you yeah, will true. feel a lot better. I know this from personal experience. That's great. So for people who, who may be watching this, who may want to... Um, you know, get your book and reach out to you and things. How would they go about that? So uh, the best way is, um, well, there's a few ways. So I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Google Plus, And my username is Dr. Anna. It's D-R-A-U-N-N-A. And then I have a website, which is www.dranna, so D-R-A-U-N-N-A.com. Um, and you can sign up for my website. You can follow me on social media. I post a lot of cool things. And on my website, you can buy my book. Um, and my book is also on Amazon. Great. Thank you so much for all your time Thank and you. all your Thank information. You first. Also, um, if I ever have any more questions, you know I'm going to come to you <laughs> because I think you, um, you've definitely opened my eyes more, which was the point of the conversation. I appreciate that. Please feel free to. For sure. Have a blessed day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.